Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to follow on with our next set of top five guitar players and we're going to be doing shredders. So there's a bit of a difference between what I would call a shredder and a metal guitarist. Again, a little bit like the rock and the blues thing, lines are a little bit blurred, but these, for me, these five are bona fide shred superstars. So let's just kick off straight away. Number five, Steve Vai. I think if you play the guitar, you're gonna have heard of Steve Vai. There's just no way around it. The guy is, yeah, I mean, all these guys on this list are technical geniuses. He's worked with Zappa, Dave Lee Roth, Whitesnake, which I absolutely loved his stuff. Whitesnake, the slip of the tongue stuff was, was brilliant. Uh, very flashy, very, very, very showy. Um, his solo stuff as well, Passion and Warfare, and For the Love of God was really, really inspiring, especially for me and for I think pretty much most of the shred community as well. So easy, easy number five. Number four, George Lynch from Dokken. He's kind of, I, he deserves to be classed as underrated. Some of the stuff, he's been in loads of other little side projects and little bands in between. And Lynch Mob, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a little band, it was, that, was some, that was some really good stuff. Wicked Sensations, a great, great, great tune. Um, and some of the stuff he did with Dokken, uh, I mean, it's, say it's shred-tastic would be, uh, would be uh, <laughs> I don't think that would actually do it justice. Some of the licks he plays and some of the runs are just absolutely breathtaking. Uh, Lynch in Dokken, Wicked Sensation, um, and if you want to check out one of his tracks because you haven't heard of him, Mr. Scary uh, from when he was with Dokken is a great instrumental piece, and that really would be one of my sort of top five instrumental tracks of all time. Fantastic. George Lynch, Dokken, number four. Number three, one of the kings himself, one of the ones that made it popular to shred on an instrumental basis only, Joe Satriani. Now, Satriani, most notably known for Surfing with the Alien, that was kind of the big instrumental album that came out uh, that sort of solidified him as one of the greats, but also allowed other guitarists to be sort of looked at in a different way because it was such a huge selling uh, album that was just purely instrumental, no vocals, no nothing, but the album was great all the way through. And you really got a sense of like, wow, this guy can play, he can literally play anything. I mean, he stepped in and he deputized for Richie Blackmore when he left, when Blackmore left on the tour in 1993, just from hearing the tapes that were sent over to him in a couple of days, he was on stage around Japan playing, you know, <laughs> deep purple stuff, just, like that, you know, obviously he knew the band, but you know, I mean, that's pretty much a pretty wow factor right there. Easy number three, Joe Satriani. Number two, would probably be a lot of people's number one, um, Ingvi Malmsteen. Now Ingvi Malmsteen, every, from everything from Alcatraz all the way through to his solo stuff, things like arpeggios from How Far Beyond the Sun, it's, it, he's so talented and his speed is so blistering you almost watch it back and you go, is that actually, is he actually doing that? Because his economy of movement is so good, you just really can't believe someone can play like that. He's in, he's got kind of on his own in that neoclassical shred style. That being said, a lot of it does sound very similar because it is, the, the scales that he plays uh, make it sound very, very classical, hence the neoclassical term. But he really is the neoclassical shred master and he plays on the, uh, He's played with Satriani in G3 with Steve Vai as well, and he more than held his own, along with the likes of like Steve Morse, John Petrucci, and all that lot, and Tobin Abassi. They all sort of slip in together, and he's a completely different style, but he's absolutely awesome. And I believe he played on the new Generation Axe tour with, who will be my number one. So, my number one is purely based for me around one album, and probably the album that when I heard shocked me the most that guitar could be played like this and it was possible. My number one pick would be Nuno Betancourt. Now, not necessarily known just for being a shredder, but if you listen to the album Porno Graffiti, it's like Decadence Dance, Get the Funk Out, it has some, <laughs> to say that it has some shredtastic moves would be, uh, would, again, the same with like the Satriani and the Lynch thing. It would kind of like, kind of almost be a moot point. He is so good. There's things like uh, Flight of the Wounded Bumblebee. His technique is very different from the others. Um, when I first heard this album, I was about 13, 14. I hadn't really heard a lot of what I'd call 
heavy sort of rock that like 80s metal hair metally i'm not calling them hair metal but that sort of style of guitar with the screaming you know screaming delays distortion and everything it was more of, i was more into the deep purple zeppelin sabbath thing and when i heard this i remember hearing decadence dance i had no idea what was going on it really is that good anuna all the way through he with more a band called Morning Widows, he's done some great solo stuff, and now he's on Generation Axe tour with um, the likes of you know Zach Wild and the like, and they are you know trading lick for lick, and he sounds absolutely fantastic. He'd be my number one, maybe not the most popular shredder, but for me, he can play anything, anywhere, anytime, and at blistering speed, and he has a style that is all of his own. Those would be my top five shred players of all time thank you for watching the video my next video is coming out is going to be a reaction video i'm not sure what it's going to be yet but we'll see and then next week we will have the top five blues players of all time thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next video